we actually talk about a lot in the field about this ratio of A over S, which is the specific shear viscosity um, values in there. So why are we actually interested in these values? So you can understand this uh, by a back of envelope uh, calculations listed here. So in the kinetic theory, the shear viscosity eta can be actually estimated by basically the momentum exchange uh, per, uh, per particles uh, through two layers. So you can actually uh, calculate the shear viscosity as one third of the particle density times this mean momentum times the mean free path. So basically it describes how many particles will actually go through two layers, between the two layers in one direction. So one third is because we are considered about three dimension here. But however, in the uh, relativist heavy ion, relativist systems, number density is not uh, conserved because you can have pair productions of particles. So it's better to translate these particle densities into, into entropy densities using, using the thermodynamic relations. So from here, so basically you, now you can actually divide both sides by the entropy densities in these in this, uh, calculations. Now in the left-hand side, you form this ratio between shear viscosity over entropy density. And the right hand side, you get these uh, combinations, which is one over 12 times the mean momentum of the particles times this mean free pass over the Stefan Boltzmann constant. So if we further use the relax uh, using the uncertainty relations to basically saying that the mean momentum of the particles times the mean free pass needs to be on the order of edge bar and much more larger. So from the uncertainty relation constraints, you are immediately to match uh, value, uh, reach a, a limit of the shear viscosity to entropy ratio is about one over 12 in terms of unit of H bar over KB. So a more theoretical, um, uh, a more, a more robust uh, calculation from string theory give you the ratio is about one over four pi over, over H bar over KB for any strongly coupled systems. So, so, so this means that this ratio is kind of universal for fluid and it needs to be uh, larger than this uh, one over four pi values. So we can look at this ratio for a few types of uh, normal fluids. So for waters around its boiling point, it, the, the ratio of A over S is about 8.2. So we know that water is already a very good fluid. So the value of A over S is, is actually on the order of 10. So if we go to liquid helium, the value of the A over S actually reduced about two. So this means that the liquid helium is actually much better fluid compared to, 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 the, uh, to the water because this, this value actually categorized the momentum, the, the energy, the, the, part, the amount of momentum diffusion per degrees of freedoms inside the fluid. So if you have less uh, momentum diffusions uh, per degrees of freedoms, you will have a better fluid. So if you look at, go to see the, these ultra coalescent atoms, you'll find that the, the value of shear viscosity is about 0.5. And then if you look at QGP, it's also it's quite small value, it's about 0.08 to 0.2 in terms of the constraint from Fermi large approach. So I want to also point out that um, although the value between of the shear viscosity between different types of fluid are quite close at least uh, for, the, for the good fluids. But if you look at uh, the, the shear viscosity alone, they actually differ by a lot. So if you look at the ultra coalescent atom, the, the, the shear viscosity actually goes to zero. It goes 10 to the minus 15. This means that there's, there's not, there's a very, very small and momentum diffusions inside the fluid. And then the entropy density also goes to zero at the same time, so which makes the ratio to be roughly constant around 0.5. But in the heavy ion collision, in the quark gluon plasma phase, the entropy is enormous. Sorry, the, 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 the viscosity is enormous. It's really large viscosities if you look at the absolute value of viscosity. This means that there's a lot of momentum exchange inside the, inside the fluid. But the, 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 the story is that the entropy of the, of the QGP is even larger than these values. So that the ratio of entropy, uh, the, the viscosity per entropy ratios is actually small. This means that the, um, the, the momentum diffusion per degrees of freedom is actually small inside the QGP. But the actual absolute the momentum exchange uh, between particles are large. So this means that this gives you idea that in the quark gluon plasma, uh, the degrees of freedom is actually enormous inside the fluid, which overcomes the, the momentum dissipations and makes this a very good fluid. So although these two are very, very good fluid, the mechanism to generate this good fluidity is actually rather different between, between cold atom and also quark gluon plasma.
So yeah, so here is another kind of uh, pictures talking about uh, showing about these shear viscosities, function temperatures, some kind of cartoon curve uh, for for the coagulum plasma. As you can see that, uh, as as you can see, is from the simulations uh, constraints, the shear viscosity of the QGP is actually very close to this uh, to the to the limit derived by the string theory, and this means that the coagulum plasma is actually very hot because it's actually sitting at a hot temperature around trillion degrees of temperatures. And it's also very small because it's only uh, exists in the size of the nucleus. And also it's very, it's very nearly perfect fluid in nature because it has very small shear viscosity to entropy ratios. So, so lastly, let me just uh, highlight a few success 